Hi there. So today's video is about how to audition various audio and MIDI in Digital Performer. In DP, you can go through, select little snippets of audio here and there, play them with Option Spacebar, and you can really listen to exactly what you want to listen to when you want to compare various elements against each other. Let's get started with a little bit of basics. So the first thing is you need to set your audio paths correctly. And the question is, is which output is your audition audio going to come through? All right. So if we go into bundles, now bundles are in studio or uh, shift U. If you're like me, you're going to want to learn shift U because I go to it a lot. So as you can see, I have two bundles. You need to move the bundle that you want to hear the audition from. Up. The path that's on top is the one that's going to deliver the audition for you, okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is that if you come into preferences here, command, comma, and you, and it'll be up there probably at first, you scroll all the way down, and in the play and record portion of this, choose audio options, and then you'll see at the bottom of this window there's an audition volume which I generally tend to keep around minus six, but you can do as you like with it. You're done, and now you're ready to go. Now, when you're in a session with players and you're sending them a headphone feed that's not the main outs, which I always do, then they're not going to hear the audition path. And sometimes that can be convenient because, you know, if you have a, a weak performer and you want to talk about what's wrong, you might not want them to hear that. I've actually had sessions before where we tuned the vocals before we let them hear it. We just sent them off to dinner because, you know, it was, it was enough of a train wreck. And just as an aside, we actually ended up getting a pretty good vocal, and that should be against the law, but who am I to talk about justice at this point? If you have the stuff in the DAW going through a reverb, and the reverb is bust or sent to your send, then you would hear it through the reverb, and you would also hear it through the talkback. So you have to take extra steps to operate in a covert mode. Now, I use UAD's console app, and so I can quickly change between outputs from Q to main outputs. If I want the outputs to be something where the talent can hear, the audition material. This is a standalone app that comes with a UA Apollo interface that allows you to monitor the live inputs from your session, i.e. the people in the performance room playing and singing to the DP session. So now that your output is selected correctly and you have a good audition volume, you can grab any pieces of audio you want by selecting them in the sequence editor and they will play back in a non-contiguous fashion. So here's what I mean. I'm going to select this cowbell click, and then I'm going to come down here and select a little bit of this accompanying guitar, and then I'm going to come here and select a little bit of this. And they are going to play in order, and none of the stuff that's not selected is going to play. So here I go. I can also have them play on, on top of each other. So if I wanted this part to play, I could do that. Let's listen now. So this is really helpful. If you've ever used Pro Tools before, you know there's really one way to hear just two tracks or three tracks or whatever against each other, and that's to go into solo mode. So you have to solo them. And sometimes that's really difficult. You know, let's say you have 100 tracks or something like that. Maybe some of the tracks are soloed, some of them aren't, some of them are on, some of them aren't. It's really kludgy to have to deal with that. So I really like this way of just being able to go in here and just grab different things. By the way, I'm pressing and holding shift command and then going to the bottom of the waveform to select these non-contiguous files. 
you see I get the cursor that's across here. And if I go up, I get the arrow, and that's not where it will work. You have to do it here. Now, another thing is you'll note that when you play these parts, the green memory cycle bar will suddenly appear. And you can also see that it lasts for exactly as long as the selection in its totality lasts. Look at it again. So the end was right there. Now MIDI is another thing. With MIDI, I'll select a little bit and I'll option spacebar. And you can see what that does. Now, this brings up another thing, and that's audible mode. Here's audible mode right here. When you click this button, then you can do two things. One is that you can pop into a sound bite by double clicking. That pops you in. And then if you drag, when you let it go, you're going to hear what you just dragged. Right, and click anywhere to make it stop. Now I'll do that here. And you'll also notice that you don't get that green memory cycle bar when you do it that way. Okay. Now with MIDI, when the audible mode is on, when you click it, you'll hear a note. Aha! Why didn't I hear that? Because it has to be play enabled. Okay, so there is, you know, if I just click here, like, you know, it'll play the notes. This is, it, it's a little uh, shoot from the hip because it's, you'll be working along and everything will be going fine. You'll go, and everybody will be, ah, you know. So you have to turn audible mode off if you're going to be scrolling. scrolling. Yeah, that's not good. You don't want that machine gun thing. So here's a quick tip. If you need to be able to toggle this a lot, and actually it's a pretty cool idea to be able to, you go into Setup, Commands, and then search for Audible. And you'll see, there it is, Toggle Audible Mode. Now, there's no keyboard command set by default, but if I go here, I can set the L key. And that's a great one. If you if if I had set a key that was already being used, like try this out for size, it's going to give me something and tell me that the keystroke's already assigned to a function. So this L is not assigned to a function. So that's great. Now this is smart enough to know if I want to click into a text field and I just type L it's not going to toggle audible mode. But the minute I get out of that text field and I type L, it's going to toggle. You see that? So that's a great way to set that up. So that's it for now. I don't know how these things would actually play out in Logic, for example, but I know in Pro Tools, you can't really do this the same way you can do it in DP. And yeah, there's a lot of things in Pro Tools I would love to see come to Digital Performer. But for the meantime, this is one really big leg up that DP has. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Like and subscribe if you want to do that. Otherwise, go on about your day and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.